Mm -hmm. But each of those articles, uh, it may be short, but they take, take a lot of research to, to contradict what we're being told by mainstream media. I'd like to ask you, you know, this is, uh, they're saying that um, uh, America is no longer in, in, in Iraq. What are your thoughts? Uh, that, that's not correct yeah. at all. We have a, mert a lot of our soldiers have been just reclassified as trainers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of mercenaries there. We've got bases. Uh, oh, Manny Man, a new one or something. I heard. Right. We have the biggest fortress, which is the U.S. Embassy in the world, over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not out of Iraq. I understand the fighting there is as severe or more severe in this last month or so since we got out of Iraq. It was someone that told me it's a small group over there that's giving them, was it Fuchsia, um, a part of Iraq, this, uh, it, that was giving uh, America a hard time. Well, these, these people are relentless and, and they never did surrender, you know. Well, the Taliban, oh, sorry, not the Taliban, this were in Iraq. Uh, no, no one wants occupier running their country, right. or occupying their country, and, and that's what it is. I mean, there are many people that are overtly supporting the opposition, and there's others covertly supporting the opposition, right. Right. and I, I wouldn't be surprised if most Iraqis want them out, because whenever I speak to Iraqis who have come here and given talks, I get to meet them at American uh, Georgetown University, mm -hmm. frequently women's group, other groups, they all want the Americans out of there. Well, it, but you think that America just don't get it? Uh, did you also th think in terms of what the uh, Afghanistan people are doing? They seem to be relentless in their battles. And I saw some of the American soldiers who, quite frankly, seem to be getting disheartened. Well, the American yeah. soldiers, once they're there, they learn what's going on. And what we're trying to do is just divide those countries up and keep control, so we keep controlling the energy resource of the Caspian Sea and Middle East. Mm -hmm. You know, Afghanistan had a decentralized government. We go in there, what do we do? We turn their society upside down by demanding a centralized government. Mm -hmm. Iraq had a centralized government, mm -hmm. we do want to decentralize. Right. Again, that changes the entire power structure, all the, the society. That is designed to break up the country, or at least keep them divided and fighting amongst themselves, so we can stay there. Yeah, interesting. So the 9-11 unveil, the war on Islam, any other books that you want to mention? Uh, well, I had a chapter in a book uh, called, uh, I don't remember the exact title, Muslim, Christians, and Jews Speak Out. Uh, it was 9-11 in American Empire. And it was a two-volume set, mm -hmm. and it has all kinds of scholars, and mostly non-Muslims writing in it. And uh, there's two volume sets, so that's a good one, 9-11 in American Empire. Uh, basically, that's it. But uh, well, this book is supplemented by photographs, by videos, by all kinds of information on our website. Mm -hmm. And that's mentioned in the book. So. Yeah, we're going to go to your website. You, you really uh, have taken care of yourself quite well, and I understand you just had a birthday recently. <laughs> yeah, I turned 71 last month. You look very good, and I'm sure yeah. the audience uh, recognizes that. Well, we only have a couple of minutes in this segment. If anything you want to say in closing? Uh, I think uh, Allah was watching out for us to have, have me meet you. Yes. It was a fortuitous meeting, and I thank you very much. Well, I want you to know you uh, you made my evening, and uh, your word is bond. You said you would send me a copy, and you did that. And here I am in Washington, and I didn't even re realize you had the book, The War on Islam. Now I get a chance to get this copy as well. Uh, I want you to know that uh, we certainly uh, are going to make sure that people get a chance to, to know what you're saying, and I think that's all Ahmadinejad was saying. There should be discussion mm -hmm. on these things so that people can become more enlightened. I'm finding that there are people who are so, uh, you know, disconnected. Uh, some people take pride in saying that they're not even uh, news watchers. They, mm -hmm. And even though that news is sanitized, you're saying that the internet offers a lot of information, right? Right. Yeah. There are now efforts underway to try to control the internet so that yeah. 
uh, people don't find our site as easily as they do NBC or <laughs> CNN. Yeah, it, you know, I, before I let you go, I, since you mentioned those local, I mean, when I think about NBC, CBS, and they're trying to talk more about their internet. You can, uh, you know, get more information by going to the internet. They're admitting that they're not giving you any real news. It's just fluff. No, uh, journalism is not like what it was. It used to be. It's basically commentary, isn't it? Exactly. You know, I have an uncle. He was in England. He uh, with Reuters for years, and he retired. Came here, covered the White House with mm -hmm. the London Times. Now lives in Pinehurst, North Carolina. He says back in his days, when Reuters, if you mention terrorist or terror, you put it in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, but who's terrorist, right? Right, right. And you know, uh, Kofi Annan, when he was the Secretary General of the yeah. UN, where is he? Uh, he? He's in Egypt back in the end. He may, be running, back in he may be running for president. Yeah, okay. but he wanted to have the UN define terrorism. And there's a panel on threats or something, etc., that came up with a definition of terrorism. Mm -hmm. But it's not accepted by the big powers because you cannot have a decent definition, of, a reasonable definition of terrorism that doesn't include what the big powers do. You know, I have to take issue. I thought Kofi Annan was from Ghana. Oh, so, sorry, yeah. Kofi Annan. I was thinking of, no, you're right. Kofi yeah. Annan is from Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I, I mixed. Uh, yeah, you mixed it with, with, mixed with yeah. the IAEA chief. Yeah. Okay, right. very good. Right. Yeah, I'm, th I'm glad because I was going to say, I, you know, I, I, I met him before, you know. But anyway, I wanted you to know that I really appreciated you coming in, and um, you, I think you're an excellent writer. Thank and you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again. I hope so. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, we're going to take a break, and I'm going to come back uh, with um, some closing comments, and uh, hopefully uh, you have been enlightened. And um, uh, Enver Masood has been my guest, and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum. We are back, my dear brothers and sisters. I certainly want to thank Brother Enver Masood, who is the author of those books that we discussed in Washington, D.C. Again, I certainly want to thank my host there, who allowed me to have that uh, studio in order to conduct that interview. You know, brothers and sisters, it is a very small world today. And this is why I'm thinking very seriously of having an international hour uh, out of one of the shows that we do on a weekly basis. And I say that because there's so much happening. And I think on the international level, we have not been as informed as I would like. As you know, we had the brothers and sisters from uh, Zimbabwe, whom I had a great time uh, with them. And uh, Mochangwa is their name, uh, and uh, the senator as well as the ambassador, and we really enjoyed them. and And I was just so enlightened by things that I w had forgotten. Actually, uh, going back to Zimbabwe, when I think about Ian Smith, and those of you who don't remember Ian Smith, he was considered like the president of what was called Rhodesia which there was only 4,500 uh, Caucasian people who were absolutely dominating uh, for at least 14 million people. And they were averaging about 20,000 uh, acres per person. And that was really something to, uh, that was appalling. However, in speaking to, I mean, um, Mugabe, who took over, as you know, who actually put them out of the, his country, but he's been charged with uh, sanctions. America has sanctions against him because he put these people out and began to redistribute uh, his land. They discovered that there were actually diamonds in abundance that was located in Zimbabwe, and after uh, discovering that, uh, 
they realized how much these people had stolen uh, from them. So I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, there's a lot going on, and I know I've heard uh, people make the argument, well, there's enough problems in America, uh, and I don't think we have time to be uh, going outside. I, I probably was one of those people who said that too. But right now, brothers and sisters, the world is so small till we have to be informed and what's going on all over. So I'm thinking of launching this show uh, called The International Hour uh, with uh, Munir Muhammad. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some international guests, uh, guests that's of importance that would impact the world and perhaps uh, we can become uh, more enlightened. But I will say this as a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He had introduced us to the world early on, and somehow we did not uh, take heed to what he was saying. So uh, it looks as though we may be getting another opportunity to revisit uh, the teachings that he has given us, because I think the whole world is beginning to realize what a great impact that this man has had. Now, I would like to even just uh, talk to some of the people that aided the Honorable Elijah Muhammad during his time uh, when he was among us. You know, what precipitated that relationship between the Moroccan government and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that he could do trade with them. So I'm going to be uh, looking and, and searching for people who are willing to come on and talk to us, even countries that are uh, want to be well represented. So we're, we're going to be looking into that. Uh, last but not least, I certainly say again, I was very pleased to get an opportunity to talk to uh, our brother in uh, Washington, Enver. And the reason I was so excited about it because Ahmadinejad received a copy of that book in Washington, D.C., and which uh, precipitated his conversation relative to a commission being formed to study some of the allegations that have been made. Ahmadinejad never denied that there was something that happened in the World Trade Center. I was there, brothers and sisters. He merely stated, since there's so much controversy, it should be revisited. So just as America talks uh, and dips in everybody else's affairs, there are other people are beginning to dip into America's affairs. That's what the United Nations seem to be all about. But anyway, I enjoyed talking to Enver. His website is up. Again, 9-11 Unveiled is his latest copy, and he's always adding to uh, that particular book. We appreciate our brother greatly, and I'm Munir Muhammad here in Chicago, and I thank each and every one of you for watching, and may Allah bless you with the light of understanding as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>